San Giovanni Rotondo is a small town in the region of Puglia in the south of Italy. The name of the city is forever linked with one of the most popular contemporary saints, Saint Padre Pio. Today, San Giovanni Rotondo hosts the shrine dedicated to the image of Our Lady of Graces. When the young novice Francesco Forgione, the baptismal name of Padre Pio, arrived here on July the 28th, 1916, there was only a convent in the middle of a wood in the wilderness. We're right by the convent where he spent his years, and a convent was established here in the year 1538, and then in the year 1646 was dedicated to Our Lady of Graces. The church, Santa Maria delle Grazie, built on the site of the old church, was constructed in 1956. Today, it is the central focus of the sanctuary, and the repaired and preserved body of Padre Pio is on display in the crypt. Saint Padre Pio suffered intensely through the transverberation, that lance that appeared his side on the 5th of August, 1918, then in the stigmata a month later. The stigmata, when a person receives them from the Lord, they are a participation in his passion, his death. And so a person is stamped with the same wounds that Jesus Christ had. Entering the convent, we met the friar guardian, Carlo Maria Laborde. Father Carlo leads us through the long corridor to reveal the spiritual heart of the friars. At the moment, we're in a cell that used to be Padre Pio's room. He started living here 102 years ago, when he arrived in 1916. He came here for health reasons, looking for a more suitable environment for his state of health, and consequently, this small room was assigned to him. This room, Padre Pio practically always kept. It's very important because of some of the events that happened here during those years. Padre Pio was here on August the 5th, 1918, a month before the stigmata appeared. He was confessing a group of young seminarians in this room as he was their spiritual director. At a certain point, he tells in a letter addressed to his spiritual director, a mysterious character appeared who threw a kind of iron instrument that pierced his heart. And that character was Christ. Temporarily, the heart of Padre Pio is located here. It was placed in this reliquary that Pope Benedict blessed when he visited this sanctuary on June the 21st, 2009, on the occasion of the exhumation. So the heart was placed in this reliquary. After his death, there were several shirts found with bloodstains. Evidently, Padre Pio had a wound. It's not known if it was permanent. Perhaps he suffered from these wounds while celebrating Mass. He also suffered the flagellation and the crown of thorns. Or maybe they appeared on Fridays or during Lent on some particular day. But certainly this relic proves what John Paul II later said, that Padre Pio had a very painful wound there that he said it was even the most painful. St. Padre Pio suffered physically, but perhaps his moral sufferings were even greater because during his life there were all sorts of accusations and allegations against him. Stefano Campanella, author of many books about the saint, gives us more details on this difficult period in Padre Pio's life. We are inside the inner chapel of the convent, also known as the Saculum, where Padre Pio celebrated Mass in solitude from June 1931 until June 1933, when the Holy Office banned him from all priestly activities, with the exception of celebrating the Holy Mass in private at the presence of maximum of one other person. Stefano says that the worst accusations came from the local clergy. Out of jealousy, they reported to the Vatican that Padre Pio was a greedy and wicked monk and that his influence was harmful to the people. As a consequence, the Vatican imposed severe restrictions and forbade Padre Pio from public ministry. Replying to this injustice, Padre Pio used to say, We kiss the hand of our mother. When it is that same hand that disciplines you, do we not kiss that hand? He chose to be obedient to the church at any cost. After two years of obedience, 
Padre Pio was allowed to return to his public priestly ministry. Under the tender gaze of Our Lady of Graces, here Padre Pio celebrated daily Mass and heard confessions. This chapel was a well of his spiritual strength and a source of all miracles and graces. Even today, there is a never-ending flow of pilgrims that pray before the Blessed Sacrament and leave prayer petitions at Padre Pio's confessional. At the back of the church on the balcony, there is a big wooden cross. Right here, when in deep prayer, Padre Pio received the stigmata in 1918. This phenomenon continued for over 50 years until the end of his life. Walking through the sacristy, we met Father Marciano Mora setting up things for Mass. Father Marciano is the last living friar in San Giovanni Rotondo who lived with Padre Pio. Qual è stata la mia prima esperienza? What was my first impression when I met Padre Pio? He reminded me of a grandfather, of a grandfather with his grandchildren. Beautiful. He was so affectionate, kind and had kind words. He made us laugh, he made us joke. Father Marciano says that during confession, Padre Pio took sins onto his own shoulders. It was a moment of deep union with the sufferings of Christ through which we are saved. I saw Padre Pio's stigmata, but I saw them because I was serving Mass. Serving Mass was a privilege. I remember that before leaving, Padre Pio used to stand here and get vested before going to the altar. Before going to the altar, he took his gloves off. Therefore, he used to celebrate Mass without his gloves. Back in the sacristy, Padre Pio allowed his wounded hands without gloves on to be kissed. A great privilege. One morning after I had served Mass, I went back to the sacristy and before he put his gloves back on, he offered his hand for me to kiss it. I took it very delicately and I brought it to my lips. What did I see? I put it back very slowly to take its image in. There was a large scab of blood on it and where the scab was broken, fresh blood was visible. The Lord chose to give Padre Pio the stigmata for the sake of the body, the church. They were a sign to others of his credibility, his credibility as a confessor, his credibility as a man who could read souls. So people were drawn to Padre Pio because of the stigmata. God used that. But then when they were in his presence, he gave them a word for their lives, certainly to lead them perhaps from sinful ways lead them from very difficult situations, sufferings, in order that they could encounter the resurrection. Interesting, you know, that for Padre Pio, he bore those stigmata for over 50 years, but then immediately after his death, the stigmata disappeared. So they were a ministry given to him for this life to bring other souls to Christ. They were not for himself, they were not for sensationalism, but they were truly to bring souls to Jesus.